Um, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. I have a little bit, just a couple of slides of PowerPoint, and then I will actually walk through um, some of the hang check functions. So I will walk through how to post a job and um, how to hire students through the platform. Um, please stop me at any time that you have questions. Um, also uh, leave some time at the end about um, questions regarding handshake or even student employment as a whole. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna share my screen now. Everybody sees the uh, the PowerPoint. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so um, there we go. So just quick overview of what I will be talking about. Um, just generally, what is Handshake? Uh, what do we use it for here at Earlham? Um, how do we have it set up? And then, as I said, I will switch from the presentation uh, to actually walking through the different functions of Handshake. And then at the end, if we have time uh, for questions. So Handshake is our, is our platform that we use um, for, for student employment. Um, but it is, generally speaking, is one of the leading career sites for college students. Um, over a thousand colleges around the country uh, use it um, internally to hire students for student employment, but also um, for students to find jobs, internships, anything after graduation or you know, summer internships, things like that. Um, there are over 500,000 employers ac across the country that use Handshake to job, to post jobs and hire students. Um, and at Earlham, 88% of our students have activated their Handshake account. So over the summer, um, before they start their first year at Earlham, they get a welcome email from us um, with instructions of how to set up their account. Um, we really encourage them to do that before they come to campus so that they can al already look at on-campus jobs, um, already apply for things before they even come here. And then we also do um, sessions for the students um, at the beginning, like during NSO, to uh, explain to them how Handshake works, how to find um, student employment jobs in there and things like that. Um, that 88% number is actually pretty impressive. Um, some of our peer schools the average is around 42% of the students, 42.5% of the students use Handshake. Um, so we really have made a very big push with our students to get them in there to use the platform and for on-campus employment, for internships, um, for all of these different things. Um, so what do we use it for? I mean, I already mentioned students use it to find jobs and internships, um, both on campus, off campus for the summer. Um, it's also where they can register for and find out about um, events sponsored by our office um, and career fairs. And some of them are collaborations with other schools. Um, they can also post and we can approve those events on our end. <clears throat> so it's visible to our students. Um, and it's also a place where students, <clears throat> excuse me, where students can um, make appointments with career coaches where they can, um, we have resources in there on like how to write a resume, how to write a cover letter, um, all those kind of things. So it's, in some ways, it's encompassing a lot of um, aspects of the, you know, career, career research um, process. Um, for faculty and staff, um, the primary use really is to um, post on campus employment positions in there and hire students. Um, I know some faculty have also reached out to us to um, get a fake um, student accounts set up so that they can see what students see um, and then also assist students, you know, in advising appointments with um, finding employment opportunities and things like that as well. Um, but primarily for faculty and staff, it's the uh, posting positions and hiring students and that's what I will be focusing on. Um, and then for our center at large, um, just so you all are aware, this is Handshake is where we um, primarily advertise our events. Um, we communicate with students through there, so we have the ability to send out mass emails about upcoming events, application deadlines for Epic Advantage, for example, um, and things like that. And we also use it for a lot of data tracking, um, you know, number of appointments that we've had with students. Um, FDS is our first destination survey where we survey students um, 
what is their first uh, career outcome after Erlem. Um, so we collect the data through Handshake. And then again, um, data on on-campus hiring. So um, how many students find jobs on campus? How many positions do they apply for? Um, and, and things like that. Um, and some of the data we need for um, federal reports on um, student employment, especially as it comes to um, work study funding, because um, we need to provide um, data on how many students have work study funding, how many students have found jobs and things like that. Um, how is it set up on our campus? So um, campus have some different options how to set it up. Um, we have set it up that each department on campus has their own employer account. Um, and those are called Earlham College dash, Becky, I'm gonna pick on you, graduate programs education. Uh, Earlham College dash events, Earlham College dash um, science division. So for the academic departments, they are set up divisionally, not by individual major, um, but generally it's like all the different departments on campus have their own, um, their own employer account. And so each account has an account owner. Um, I'll show some of that in a minute in Handshake itself. Um, but there's one, one person within your department who is the owner of that account, um, which allows them to um, invite new people. If you have new staff in your department, um, you are able to invite them to join so that they can also post positions for on behalf of your department. Um, and the owner is also, once they, um, the new person goes through the setup process, um, the owner actually has to do the final appro approval so that they can get access to the account. Um, in most departments, that is the uh, department admin, but each department on, handle, on campus handles it a little bit differently. So um, I can't not necessarily tell you of who specifically is in each department. Um, one important aspect with that though is um, that uh, ownership needs to be transferred. So um, if the admin or whoever is in charge of the account um, is leaving the college, um, that ownership needs to be tra transferred to somebody else in the department because otherwise, if new people want to get, gain access to it, there's nobody and the, the own, original owner has left the college, um, there's nobody who can approve new people. Um, and so that has come, uh, that issue has come out several times and a lot of times we have to contact Handshake itself um, so that they can on, on their very back end can change um, owners. But that is unfortunately not something that we in our office where we have a few um, different ways to access Handshake, we cannot change owners on your behalf. So that is something that has to happen um, within the department and I can show in a second of how to how to do that. Um, so those are just kind of my big overview slides. Um, before I jump into the walkthroughs of some different processes, are there any questions so far from anybody? No, looks good. Okay, um, then I will pull up Handshake. Do you see my Handshake screen now? I usually have to stop sharing if I'm going from one one platform to another, like from PowerPoint to a web. Yes. Never mind. Does that work? Okay, perfect. <laughs> that's what I was wondering of how that's gonna work, but perfect. Okay, so um, obviously this is the login screen for Handshake. Um, we have links to it in the hard. Uh, but just be careful because there's there's one link under campus life and that one is for students to get access and there's one link under work life which is for employers to get access. So just make sure when you're act, trying to access Handshake you're using the right link. Um, especially if you've never been in there yet. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. So um, I'm obviously not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about how to get up, get set up in the handshake in the very first place. Um, I walk through it a little bit, but um, a lot of that, some of it has to sometimes happen on my end. So if you have never been in handshake and you need to get set up, um, you might want to shoot me an email. 
um, and we can walk through that process individually together. Um, but so this is what you see when, um, when you log into Handshake, this is kind of the landing page for employers and um, going to walk through a couple of things. So first off in the top right hand corner, there's your name. Um, and if you go under teammates, I think this might only be an option visible to you if you are the account owner. Um, if you go on a teammates, um, you will see all the people that have access to your departmental handshake account. So I'm the owner of, of our of the CGCE department. Um, and then we have two other people that have access, which means they can post positions. Um, so you can see that for your organization. Um, and if you want to, again, this is only if you're the owner, but if you want to invite um, other people in your department to join Handshake, you can click up here on um, copy invite link, select role, which be, would be recruiter. So somebody who can post jobs and um, yeah, post jobs, hire students or like have all those abilities and then create this link and you can just copy it and you know, email it to um, whoever you want to invite in, in the department and then they can start the setup process. Um, and once they've gone through that setup process, which for the most part is pretty self-explanatory, um, once they've gone through that and finalized that, um, they will have to wait for the owner's approval to, um, to finally really get final access to everything in the um, account. And so up here where the world is, you will see a red um, notification telling you that somebody needs access. Um, and I believe that the notification just says this person would like access to the account and then there's a button where you can click approve. Um, so that is how you, if you have new people in your department that need to be added to Handshake, um, that is one way how you can go about it. Um, if you need to transfer ownership, like I was talking about earlier, if for whatever reason you are uh, leaving the college, you can pick somebody else in your department. Um, just click on the three dots over here, um, click on edit user. And then down here, you can change the role. So um, you can make somebody else the owner. Um, if you have people in your department that are no longer, if there are people connected to the account that are no longer working for your department, you can deactivate them. Um, I would highly encourage uh, you to do that. Um, just so, you know, for privacy purposes that they can't get um, into the system anymore after they've left. Um, and so, yeah, so that is how you can make somebody else the owner um, or deactivate people who are not no longer in your department. Yes, Becky. So I know you said this is basically not possible, but our last admissions person has been gone for three or four years and she's our owner. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I feel like we've even asked her and she's great. She's not trying to be a jerk, but she couldn't figure out how to get in there. So, so we don't have an owner who works for the college. Yeah. So in that case, um, I would have to contact Handshake, um, tell them who that person is that needs to be deactivated and give them, I don't know, your name or whoever else should be the owner of your account. So that's something that then Handshake just has to do on the back end. They have to put in a ticket for that. So I should go through you to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and I will, when I put in the ticket, um, I will also add your email in there so that we both get a notification once they've done that. Um, I've had to do that several times and each time they do that within 24 to 48 hours, like really quickly. Um, so they're they're pretty on top of on top of that usually. Great, thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, let me try and I have my screen of people over here and the screen that I'm walking through over here. So <laughs> just trying to keep a keep track of everything. Um, so yeah, so that that was um, account ownership and some of the privileges that and really generally like owner versus recruiter, the only difference is that the owner can approve new people to add to the department. Other than that, they have the same privileges. They can both 
um, post jobs, hire students, all of those same things. Um, all right, so back to the home screen. Um, again, this is, this is what you see. Um, really, most of these things that you see are not necessarily very important to you. Um, it's weird. So there's a posting the job. I will walk through that in a minute. Um, requesting an interview. This is a specific module in Handshake, typically used for if, if there's you know career fairs. We have a lot of employers that are doing interviews and things like that. So that will generate like interviewing time slots and things like that. But for if you are hiring a student, you do want to interview them. Please don't use this. Just communicate with the student back and forth. Just shoot them an email. It's like hey, we're interested in you. Uh, we'd like to do an interview. Um, so this is not really a, a module that we use for on-campus employment. Um, and then creating an event. This is, um, again, mostly used from our end on the career side to um, advertise like career education events, workshops that we're hosting. So um, not necessarily other departmental workshops, unless you want to partner with us on something, we're more than happy to do that, of course. Um, so yeah, so posting a job, we'll walk through that step by step. Um, a lot of things are fairly self-explanatory. Some things are kind of quirky. Um, so, um, so when you click on new job, you can either do it right through the home screen um, where it says post a job, that's the easiest way. Um, on the left-hand side, there's also the job, the jobs tab over here. Um, and it will show you um, currently active positions that your department is hiring for. Um, so this is anybody in your department. So, you know, with the, um, let's say an academic division, you would see, you know, the religion department hiring somebody, the English department hiring somebody. So you can see all of those jobs um, when you log in, but obviously you would only be in charge of the ones that you are posting and supervising. Um, so yeah, you can see currently active jobs. Um, you can also see expired jobs, so any previous um, positions that you've posted. I will go a little more over some of this later, why these are important. Um, but then again, you can also create a job right from here. Um, so um, just going through the step by step, stop me at any point if you have more questions. Um, so first of all, applications should be um, going through Handshake, just so it's one central place for the student. Um, we're not really using another external system here at Earlham. Um, if you wanted to, the students to submit documents and stuff, I'll, we'll get to that in a minute. It'll show you, um, I'll show you how, how those will be attached to the um, job application. So job title, you know, whatever the position is in your department. Um, company division, you don't really need to worry about that. Um, I don't even think it would really show up on the student's end, even if you added anything in there. Um, contact information, I would definitely highly encourage you to um, display your name um, because we do get students a lot of times who ask us like, who do I need to reach out to? You know, I have questions about this job or I want to resubmit something to somebody. So if your name is at least there, it won't show your email, unfortunately, but if your name is there, the student can find out who to contact um, if they have more questions about the position. Um, job type, this is really important um, to set it to student employment, on-campus student employment, um, because students, when they search for on-campus uh, jobs, they are filtering for that. And so um, I've lately seen quite a few um, positions that were set to job, um, which then unfortunately is not visible to students when they search just for student employment positions. So um, really double check that you have selected the right um, the right job type here because it, it will filter it out if you don't. Um, employment type, it's part-time. Um, all of our positions should be a maximum of uh, 10 hours a week uh, while at class science session. Um, outside of like during longer breaks, like over winter break, for example, um, when students are not taking classes, students can work up to 40 hours a week. Um, but once when class are in session, it can be up to 10 hours per week. Um, that is, especially for work study jobs, that is how much funding is available to students um, to spread it out over the whole academic year. 
And um, it's also an early policy um, because we want our students to focus on the academics. That's why they're here and they do spend a lot of time, especially right now with the seven week, um, seven week semesters, um, you know, they're really cramming in a lot. And so, you know, just speaking from my personal experience with the students that I supervise here, um, like a lot of them don't even have the energy to really work the full 10 hours. Um, so just kind of keeping that in mind, especially some students might also have two jobs. So you might want to check in, you know, after you hire students, of course, um, check in with the students of, you know, how many hours can you allocate to each job? Um, but yeah, generally, unless you're um, hiring for over the summer or over winter break, and you do want it to be more than those 10 hours a week, um, then you can select it to full-time if you plan on hiring somebody 40 hours, but throughout the academic year and class on session, they're all part-time. Um, duration, uh, we consider all of our positions temporary um, just because students are graduating eventually and will graduate out of these jobs. Even if they stay in the same job for four years and it is a longer term, we do consider them temporary. Um, you know, you can, I think it makes you select a start and end date. So like what would be the very first day that they, you know, start working for you, let's just say so December 1st. Um, you know, let's just say they work for us until the end of spring semester. So sometime at the end of May. Um, this does not mean that the student then, you know, has to or can't come back next semester or anything like that. This is more on the back end. I'm not even 100% sure if the students will really see these dates. Um, but it does make it does force you to pick dates right there. Um, then work study, um, you know, um, generally pretty much all of our jobs on campus should be work study positions um, because those are positions that are uh, partially funded through the federal government. So we are not, Arlem is not fully paying the full salary. Um, and it, it provides students that have great need with, um, you know, with additional funding for, for their studies, for, you know, snacks and whatever. <laughs> um, so only uh, positions that, you know, we can consider sort of specialty positions um, where they're really required to have special skills. For example, you know, a TA for um, some classes, those might not necessarily be work study position because you are looking for somebody who, you know, let's say speak Spanish or whatever. And maybe you don't have any students that speak Spanish who have work study funding. So um, that could be a non work study job or lifeguards where they need specific certifications in order to do that job. So that's what I mean by like um, specialty positions. Um, and then part of this also depends on the budget that you have available in the department. Um, if you have work study funding to uh, pay students. Um, but I would say most, nearly all of our positions are work study positions on our campus. Um, because again, we want to provide uh, that funding to our students who are in need. And um, work study, work award, work award is the funding for international students, um, are kind of sort of used interchangeably um, at Earlham. And so if you select work study, um, these positions are only visible to students who have work study and to students who have work award. So if a student does not have either one of those financial aid fundings, um, they will not even see the position when they log into um, Handshake. So it automatically filters it out and makes them invisible to students without that kind of funding. Um, so next page, uh, job description. Um, so um, things you want to include in your job description are obviously the duties and responsibilities that the student will be doing for your department, um, how they're supporting the department, um, some skills that you're looking for, or if it's not necessarily specific skills, but more like, you know, um, personality, character traits, like somebody who's very open and friendly because they're sitting at a front desk and have to deal with a lot of people, you know, those kind of things. Like, what are you looking for in a student? Um, I would encourage you to think of like, what are the students gaining from this position? What are some like learning outcomes that you maybe have for them? Um, because, um, you know, Gen Z is, is on our campus now and they're very much focused on 
learning and wanting to gain out of um, gain things out of the experience that they have. So they're always looking for what's you know kind of what's in it for me. Um, what can I gain out of this? They already think beforehand like how can this help me, you know, down the road? How can this help me get an internship? Having this experience, gaining these skills, customer service skills, whatever it might be. Um, so I would encourage you to write something about that in the job description, like what can students learn from this position? Um, what is the expected time commitment? Is this a 10 hour a week position? Is this five hours a week? Like what are you expecting them to commit to this position? Um, is there any kind of training? So for uh, my position, I try to do training before the semester even starts. And so that's something important for the students to know when they apply that like, hey, I already need to commit some time to this before the semester even starts. Can I do that? Do I even need to apply to this position if I can't do that? Um, I would also um, write in there, especially at this moment where a lot of positions are remotely. So maybe add that into the job description as well, letting them know that this is an in-person position, this is a remote position, maybe a hybrid of things, I don't know. Um, some students might just feel more comfortable doing some kind of remote, remote work at the moment rather than, you know, being in contact with a lot of other people. Um, and then if you, I'll get to that in a minute too, but, um, you know, you'll have a deadline for students to apply for the position. And so for me, for example, I don't look at any application until the deadline has passed. Um, and so that's something you might want to add in there too, so that you're not getting you know, emails every other day from students like, hey, have you looked at my application yet? Have you looked at my application yet? If you write it in there, it's like, we're not reviewing or we will be reviewing applications after the deadline, then you can avoid some of those um, email communication with the students. Um, so yeah, so you want to write, you know, pretty good, uh, I'm not gonna do that right now, but <laughs> you want to write a pretty good uh, um, job description in there to, you know, um, covering all these different things. Um, and then the next thing that Handshake requires you to pick, this is a required field, is job role. Um, this is one of the somewhat newer functions in, in Handshake. Um, and it was not really made with student employment in mind. <laughs> so there's a lot of different like titles in here um, that don't necessarily, like a lot of it doesn't really fit with what we hire for on campus. So, but this is all something that is not visible on the student's end. Um, like they can kind of filter for some things, but it's not really visible. And so just pick whatever sounds closest to your role, if it's like clerical, teacher, tutor, you know, those kind of things. Um, just gonna go with actor for right now. You can also pick multiple job roles as you can see, um, but it forces you to pick at least one. Um, how many students do you expect to hire for this position? Um, that's really something important for us on our end as well. When we look at, um, you know, hiring trends of like how many, like our, our departments finding enough students for their positions. Um, I know that's one thing that I've heard this semester, some departments really struggle to uh, find enough students to who applied for the positions. So maybe something we can help you with. Um, so, and just in general to see how many students are hired in each department. So if you don't know the exact number, you can put an approximate, but please add a number in there. Well, actually it makes you put a number in there. Um, all of our positions are paid. Um, we pay 7.25 an hour. That's the same across the board on campus. Um, job location. So this actually, you actually have to type in an address so I'll just 801 National Road West. Um, again, if you are allowing remote work, you can select this um, box and then require documents. I know it says optional here, but we really um, require all students to submit a resume just to get that experience of putting together a resume. Um, you know, what do I put on there? How do I write it? So we want students to have that experience um, and we want them to submit resumes for every single job on campus. Um, beyond that, if you want a cover letter for your job, you know, by all means, you can have them submit that. If you want a transcript for some reason, if you want to see that they've taken a certain class, um, any kind of other documents. So I sometimes have students submit 
um, course schedule so I can already see like, oh, how I would maybe schedule all the students. Um, I know some marketing positions require them to submit like a sample of a graphic they created. So, you know, it might be all kinds of different things. Um, you just want to describe in the box like what you want the student to submit. Um, and the other thing that is kind of iffy, um, you can only submit one other document. Um, so if you want them to submit a writing sample and a course schedule, they have to like put that in one document rather than two separate ones. Um, preferences, really all of this is optional. Um, you can select things if you want to, you don't have to. Um, it does not exclude anybody from applying, but you know, let's say you just want juniors or seniors, um, a freshman can still apply, but they will see that they don't meet your preferences. So that's just kind of what it does. Um, so yeah, most of this is optional. And then this down here, so how do you want to receive the applications? Um, it defaults to whoever is doing the, whoever's setting up the jobs right now, defaults to me. Um, but if you want to have somebody else in your department to receive the job um, package as well, you can pick them from whatever list pops up for you. Um, there's a lot of random names in here. <laughs> um, or you can create a new contact if this person is not in Handshake. Um, you know, just type in the email address, first name, last name. Um, this does not create an account for them. It just means that they will receive um, the application packages. Oh my, it just kicked me all the way out. No. Hold on. Oh, here we are. Sorry. <laughs> um, and you can choose if you want to get all applications at once, once the job is expired, or you can have, you can get an email every time a new student applies to the position. Um, so it's very much personal preference, however you want to do it. Um, yeah. And then on the next page, so job postings, since this is an internal position, only available to our students, um, you would choose Golem College that it's only posted here. Um, you don't need to worry about global apply start and end date. Um, just down here, these are the actual um, apply start and end date that show up in Handshake to the student. So you can pick whatever day and time you want. Um, you can even, you know, let's say, I don't want this job to be, I don't want students to be able to apply until November 20th. Um, if you set it to something in the future, it will all be already be visible in Handshake to students, but they won't be able to apply until like November 20th right here. Um, then expiration date. Um, so, I mean, you obviously have to pick one. Uh, generally, as a rule of thumb, I would say, give it like two to three weeks um, for students to apply. That way you have a little bit of time to advertise the job um, through other means like on your department social media and today at Earlham, word of mouth, whatever it might be. Um, but, you know, two to three weeks out, that's also a good time for students to prepare an application and submit it. Um, I know some departments on campus, um, you know, they, they hire on a rolling basis, they hire all throughout the year. So they might open a position in August and have it open till May, like just throughout the whole year. Um, that's typically the departments that hire a lot of students um, and also have a lot of turnover. So that's also something you can do. Um, but generally I would probably more recommend to have it open for like two to three weeks. So I'm just gonna choose just for right now. <laughs> um, you can also like you really pick, um, you know, time up to like five minutes accurate. <laughs> um, and the students will see exactly the day and time that the application closes. And then next you will see, um, this is what, what the students will see when they log into Handshake and look at your position. So you see the job title, the department, um, you know, the pay, the job description, it will show you exactly. Because I set it into the future, it will tell you tell the student um, that'll open on November 20th. Um, 
Otherwise it would say right here, application closes on whatever date, um, have the job description, all of these things. So this is like your final, you know, looking over it one more time, making sure everything is correct. Um, and then make sure that you hit save and your job is posted. And you, you'll see it one more time from the back end. Um, you can always go in and edit it again if you need to. Um, up here, you will see applicants in the, in the right hand corner. Um, you can also, once you have an applicant, you'll see it right here. Um, if you need to expire the job before the expiration date that you have said, you can do that as well. If you have enough application or have hired enough students. Um, so that is the process of um, posting a brand new job. Are there any questions about that before I move into a couple of other things? I have a quick question. Yes. Um, I have a very specific course schedule that I want them to fill out because we're only open certain hours. How mm -hmm. would I attach that document for them to fill out? Yes, great question. Um, so you have to do the whole process that I just showed you. Um, and once you have saved it, then as you scroll, as the job pops up, um, you scroll all, all the way towards the bottom, um, it says new attachment and you can upload your attachment there, um, give it a name and then attach it to the job position. But again, this, this does not pop up until you have created the whole job. That makes sense. And then the students will see it when they look at the job, they will see the attachment as well um, and can download it and re-upload it with the application. Um, however, you want them to do that process. Any other questions? Okay. So um, this was posting like a brand new job that you've maybe never posted before. Um, a lot of times you're probably hiring, probably hiring students for the same position that you've had before. Um, and you obviously don't want to go through all of these steps again. Um, so what you can do, you can pull up that position from the past, like if you're under expired jobs. Um, please, if you learned one thing from this workshop, <laughs> please do not just extend the deadline again. Um, because what that does, it keeps the applicants from the past um, and, and they could not. So Jen applied to this job in the past. Let's say Jen wants to apply, you know, it's two years later. Jen has had more experience, she has a better resume, she maybe has a new connection to your office and already knows you. Um, if you just extend the deadline of the old job, Jen cannot reapply to this job because her application from two years ago is still in there. Um, and we want to make sure that with every single job, every student has equal access to apply to them again if they want to. Um, so what you will need to do instead is um, you pull up the old job description and over here on the left side, it says duplicate job. Um, and that keeps all of the old settings that you've had. Um, and, you know, you can review it all one more time. Uh, maybe you need to, you know, maybe you did it wrong last time you got said to on-campus student employment. Um, you want to, at this point, you want to, you know, pick a different a new um, start and end date for the application cycle. Oh, no, not December 17th. Um, so you can review all of that again. Um, you know, maybe you want to make a couple of tweaks to your job description. Um, you know, maybe this time you're hiring just one person, last time you hired three. So like some of these things you have to update, but you don't have to go through the whole process again. You just review things that you had last time. Um, then you'll have to add Erlim again. Um, yeah, the apply start and end date. And 
and then oh didn't I just select one um, and then you know you see it again the updated version and you can save it um, and again that way students can who have applied in the past and who want to reapply they have the opportunity to do that again um, it does not exclude anybody from doing that so please don't just extend a deadline on an old job, um, duplicate it. It takes a couple of extra steps, um, but really it's still faster than completely doing a new job um, posting. Any questions about that? I know this is super riveting, just walking through all of these things, <laughs> but- uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, so, I have several expired jobs mm -hmm. that um, I don't need anymore. How do I make them go away? Um, you want to like completely delete them out of your expired job list? Yes. That's a good question. Um, I am not sure. Let's see if I just pull up this old job. Um, you know, I've never thought about that. Um, I think under edit, at one point here it says delete. See what happens. Okay, so it looks like that's not really an option to completely delete it if students have applied to them. Um, I mean, expired jobs are not, they're only visible to you on your end um but yeah it looks like you can't at least if, if a student has ever applied to that position it looks like you can't actually delete them completely they must go away at some point or something because there's i'm in with the it department and there's several positions that have expired in their per semester so mm -hmm. I mean, at some point we're going to end up with hundreds of right right yeah um i honestly i've also never really thought about that <laughs> um so i'm not sure if they just expire after a certain time or um yeah i mean that's something i would have to maybe do some research on the handshake like in their support community and see mm -hmm. if there's a, another way to do that um so yeah i don't have a good answer for you on that right now. Other questions? Okay. Um, the last thing I just want to go through is how to hire um, students through Handshake. So, um, once you have the job, you know, I just clicked on the on the job that I want to look at. Um, this is a very old position, um, but you will see, you know, either here it says you have one applicant or up in the left hand corner, either way, work, right hand corner, I mean, um, either way works. Um, every time. Uh, so when students apply, you will get an email uh, with a file attached that has their resume in it and whatever else you require them to submit. Um, but you can also just go into Handshake and see those documents. Um, so you just click on review applicant, um, you will see their name. Um, if you have set any preferences like major, um, schoolie, all that stuff, you will see right here if they match those preferences or not. Um, and if you have never looked at them, um, it would say pending right here. Um, and so you can just click on their, on their name, um, it'll pull up their profile in Handshake whatever they chose to make public. Um, so I'll show you the, the year they're in, the major, um, if they have put in any work experience, you can see that in here, extracurriculars projects, like whatever, however much a student has put in there. Some of our students have really well built out profiles. Um, other only have their like, year and major in there. So it just depends. Um, but documents is obviously the thing you want to look at. Um, so you would you would see the resume right here. Um, 
bad resume example we have in here. Um, so you'd see the resume in here, the cover letter, whatever you required them to um, submit. It'll pull it up and write in here, or you can download the documents to your, um, to your desktop. Um, and so you reviewed the students, um, you know, you'd see all the students see that apply to your position and you decided that you wanted to hire them, you just set them to hired. If you don't want to hire them, you set them to declined. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, the important thing to know with that is that if you, so the students can see when they log into Handshake and they go in under their applications, um, they can see all the application they've ever submitted. Um, and next to them, they will see what the application status is. So they will see pending. Um, so pending is when they've just submitted and like nobody has looked at it yet. Um, if you have, if you on your end have looked at it, they will see reviewed just like it shows here now. Um, because I've looked at Jen's material, it will show reviewed. Um, so reviewed means you've looked at it but not made a decision yet. Um, and then hired or declined. Um, so students can see that when they log into Handshake, but they don't necessarily get an automatic notification. So let's say you set them to hired, they're not getting an email automatically that they're hired. So that is still something that you will have to do. You will have to email the student, letting them know of your decision um, that, you've, that you've hired them. Um, same with declined. Um, with declined, there's actually a way to set up automatic emails. Um, hold on, I have that in my notes somewhere. I think it's on a company settings. Sorry, I got lost in my notes. Um, Um, if you go on the left hand side on my profile um, and you go on account, um, they can do um, notification preferences. So that is when do you personally get notifications? Um, you know, things like when a student applies for a job and things like that. Um, and then there's also state uh, status messaging preferences. So um, you can set up if you're reviewing a student, um, you can set up that they get an automated message um, if you are declining a student, you can send an automatic message um, and you can um, put the text in here. You can write it however you want to. Um, there's no option to do that for hired. <laughs> so for hired, you have to um, actually go, like actually message the, the student personally if, um, via email. Um, so this is an option you can do if you if you want to, um, that those automatic messages go out, um, or you can, you know, email the student individually. Um, however, you prefer to do it. Um, but I do definitely encourage you to uh, message all students, no matter of the decision, um, like some kind of message to the student, um, because that's definitely one of the biggest complaints that we hear in our office. Like, I apply to something. I never heard back, what do I do? Um, so I would definitely encourage you to reach out to the student either way, um, let them know of your decision. Um, I have a quick question. Yes. So that subject line that you have there says, thank you for applying. And then it says your department. Mm -hmm. um, it, can that be personalized? Like for example, um, I'm in the library, but let's say a student applies for the circulation desk and they apply for my job in the archive. Can I customize it so it says that it's the archive position that is declined or hired or whatever versus the main library position so they won't think that they have been declined from say both? Right. Um, oh, that's a good personal question. to me. Right. Um, I believe it is only possible to do that per department and not for specific, um, I mean, the only thing that you could do, which is kind of, you know, extra steps, but 
you know, resetting this message every time, like, you know, when you go in and you select the client or, um, you know, you, you create the message beforehand, set this up so it is personal to, to your position and you decline the students. And then whenever somebody from circulation desk goes in, they um, redo the message before they decline students. Um, so that's like the only way I can think of. I don't think you can really set it up for specific jobs to be different. I think it's only department wide. Other questions? Um, that was pretty much it. Um, so marking students as hired or decline obviously is important for them to see um, in handshake and to trigger those messages. Um, but also really for me on my end, because we do a lot of, um, you know, like data pulling of, um, you know, who got hired where and things like that. Um, I also coordinate with HR to let them know, you know, these students got hired, um, you know, expect them to come in to do paperwork if they've never done the paperwork before, before they can start working. Um, it's also, we pull data for financial, uh, for federal um, work study reports that we have to submit to the federal government. Um, so this is a really, really important step. Um, I know a lot of, a lot of departments on campus do a really great job with, you know, keeping track of hired and decline and, and marking students. Um, but there's definitely also a lot of improvement. <laughs> so um, please keep that in mind that you, when you hire students, that you set them to your hired or declined. Um, and then also make sure that you, once you have hired a student, that you check in, in the heart. Um, you can see if they have, if you pull up the student's name in the heart, you can see if they've done their tax paperwork. Um, and so if they've done their tax paperwork, they're pretty much good to go to work for you. But if they haven't done it, they have to go to HR within three days of hiring. Um, again, this is federal compliance with, with work, um, like labor laws and stuff like that. And so they cannot start working before they've done their tax paperwork. Um, and that's something we've had some issues with lately that students start working um, before they've completed their paperwork and that can get us in some serious compliance um, violations. And so please make sure um, that your students have done their tax paperwork. Um, unfortunately, when we set students in here to hire, it does not trigger any kind of message to HR. Um, so I'm trying to be some of that bridge um, and checking handshake and see when students are hired to let them know. Um, but if you can also communicate with the student to let them know, it's like, hey, you have to go to HR, you have to do this paperwork um, before you can really start working for us and do training for us. Um, yeah, we really need, need your help as supervisors with that as well to make sure that we are compliant with all those kind of things. Um, all right, we have a couple more minutes. Um, if there are any questions, yes. I don't know if you could answer this or not, because this is more when you're the um, supervisor for the timesheet. Mm -hmm. um, what is the difference between full control and clock in? I was just told always to do full control and I was never explained why. Yes, okay, that is a great question. I can answer that. Um, so full control, um, the student can actually type in um, when they start working, Ooh, that's very dark in the office, um, when they start working and when they clocked out. So they can literally type in 12 till 2 p.m. Uh, clocking in and out is they have to really do it at the beginning of the shift, they have to clock in. When they leave, they have to clock out and it will automatically record what time that is. Um, so with full control, you know, the student can go in any time and type in any kind of times. Whereas with clocking in and out, like they have to be on top of doing that at the correct time. So okay. that's, that's the difference between those two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Um, Jill, I just saw your question about searching for applicants. Um, I would have to look into that. I'm not quite sure. When you say students 
that applied as volunteers. Can you tell me more about that, Jill? Sure, we were looking to engage more of our Erlang students in kind of peer-to-peer -peer interactions as much as we could on daily visits, but mm -hmm. I have a pool to draw from or to our previous um, admissions volunteers, so to speak, you know, for mm -hmm. overnight hosts, which we're not able to do now. So we're trying to utilize them in a different capacity. I just went on to Handshake and was trying to figure out if you could search by previous applicants and if there was any way they had marked it that they were perhaps interested in volunteering as well as paid employment. Well, you, you can certainly do, if you go into previous positions, like expired positions, you can see applicants. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think it, Handshake really has the ability to differentiate between volunteer, unless they, they said that anywhere in the application. Um, I'm not sure if there's just a filter option to do that. OK, thanks. Any other questions? We all good? All right. Well, thank you all for attending. Um, thank you for putting this on for us. Yes, of course. Uh, I hope this was valuable. I know it's a little bit dry to just <laughs> walk through it all step by step, but um, I also do have handouts that I can send out to everybody that kind of walks through everything as well. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, um, studentemployment at erlum.edu is the best email to reach me with those kind of questions. So just feel free to reach out to me. Hey, can you repeat where this will be available, the recording for any of those that want to go back over the, what you presented today? Yes, it'll be um, on our website. Uh, what is it, Melissa? cgce.erlum.eu? <laughs> Um, so it'll be on our, the CGC website. Um, there's a student employment section on there, um, and I will upload it in there um, under on campus supervisors. Um, yeah, that's where it'll be. Thank you, Leah. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you.